Welcome to another mini lesson. I will show you a very instructive segment in this endgame that teaches us two crucial patterns in chess and games, and also one crucial pattern when it comes to chess calculation. I love such multi purpose puzzles that can teach us so many fundamental things about chess. Are you ready, folks? Please focus, concentrate, and welcome to this beautiful position. Black has an extra bishop in this endgame. Black is going this way, obviously. Black has the h-pawn. And now white plays the move g4. It's your turn. Please stop the video and tell me the correct response for black in this position. There's only a single correct move, but you must tell me the reason why. That's what I'm mostly interested in this position. Beginners, intermediate players, you will like this position. Very rich, very deep. Take your time, please. Go beyond the impulses. Actively search for the best response for the opponent. Okay? Folks, you're a great player if you found the move bishop takes g4. That's the only winning move for black. You might say, what's the reason? Why did we not create a pass pawn in this position? It looks much more easily winning. We are coming there in a second. But why bishop takes g4? That's a very important endgame chunk. Well, because the h-pawn promotion square is on the same color as the bishop, which means we will be able to win this position with the help of the king, obviously, right? Our king will slowly go there, will collect the pawn because of Zugzwang, the king has to give way, will first collect the h-pawn, and the resulting position, our pass pawn is a rook pawn, but our bishop is a good bishop because it controls the promotion square. If this bishop would be a dark square bishop, then this position would be a draw. That's a crucial endgame chunk for us to quickly understand from the initial position. For example, well, that's a winning mechanism. There are many winning moves for black, but just to show you, as long as you're careful, as long as you don't play bishop g2 here, which is a stalemate, then black is winning. The h pawn is running, we'll go with check, of course, and you can understand if this bishop in this position will be a dark square bishop, this position would be a stalemate because there will be no way for us to repel the king from the light square corner. It will be a stalemate. But since the bishop controls the promotion square of a rook pawn, black is mating. So this is the first chunk already to be visible to a strong player's eye from this position. Bishop takes g4, no calculation. We are winning because eventually we will collect the pawn and our bishop is the right bishop in this position. Okay? But many players in this position would go h takes g4 because they are anticipating the opponent in pushing the pawn and they calculate further and they are queening first with a clearly and easy winning endgame. Now, it's your turn. Please, blunder check the move h takes g4. Does it really, really work for black? And for this, you need to actively search for a candidate move for your opponent, an alternative reaction for white, if you take that pawn. And many players never do that. Folks, you're a great player if you understood white's best move in this position. There's only a single move for white that keeps the draw, and that's the move king f4. Bam! Cold shower, they are stopping our pawn on g4, and now they are getting ready for the push of their now pass pawn that you just gave to white. Notice the black king is in Siberia. The black king is there's no way to stop the pawn by itself. And that's why this position is a draw. Because king, well, king d4 is the main try, but the pawn is too quick. You see, after h6, we learned one more crucial endgame pattern. This king is not inside the square of the pawn on h6. That's how you quickly understand whether a pawn, a pass pawn, is queening or can be stopped by the enemy king, right? You just draw a square from the pawn like this, on the sixth rank like this, and if the enemy king can enter the square of this pawn, then they can stop the pawn. But in this position, obviously, the king cannot enter the pawn square, and that's why you need the bishop's help to stop the pawn. What's the problem? The bishop is tied down on your pawn on g4. Thus, after bishop e4 to stop the pawn, the king will take your final pawn, and this position 
is a simple draw. Can you see my point, folks, with this h takes g4 move being a blunder? And many players only look at the move h5, which is a blunder, of course. And of course, you queening first with check in this position and you win as black. I'm sure many of you have calculated this line, but it takes a strong player to also give choices to their opponents. Actively search for ways for the opponent to spoil the party for you, right? Human cognition, of course, visual thinking, confirmation by us. We seek for evidence from the world that confirms our beliefs at all times. And that's a perfect blunder that is explained by that process, folks. Many players don't look at the move king f4. Once you put it on the board, right? Everything becomes crystal clear almost. That right now you need your bishop's help to deal with this guy. But the bishop is overworked on the pawn. And the pawn cannot go forward because of the king position on f4. And once you look at this position, once you spend some time here, you understand that you spoiled the position for yourself. Again, it was a cunning try by white, right? To play the move g4. They are giving us a choice to blunder. And many players blunder in this position because they think, hey, g pawn is much faster than the h pawn. And this is easily winning for me if they push the pawn. But then they forget about the move king f4. Multi-purpose move, by the way. The king is also shouldering our king on d4. Look at the iron king for white. That does many, many things in this position. Put pressure here, stop the pawn, while also shouldering away our king like that. And finally, what we learn from this puzzle, that the rule of a square is very, very important rule to quickly check, right? To quickly check whether pawns can promote or whether they could be stopped by the enemy king, right? Very quick processes. This pattern is a chunk. The entire pattern of rule of a square is a chunk that you should learn first. That will make the entire process much more efficient in pawn and games. Plus, this chunk we discussed, the bishop being on the right color of the h-pawn is also quickly visible to a strong eye. That's why those endgame patterns are crucial to master first. Because then the entire thing will become so much more easier for you, right? Almost like without calculation, you take on g4 once you know that pattern. Also, Sukswang is the sharpest endgame weapon. If white can wait forever here, then black cannot make progress. But since you have to make a move for white, the king has to give way for our king, and our king will slowly collect the pawn, and the rest is easy. So, to summarize, I love those instructive positions that can teach us so many fundamental processes and patterns in a single go. I hope you love it as well, and I hope you avoided the blunder in this position. Even if you blundered, I hope you learned your lessons. Now, in your next games, you will be much more efficient in avoiding those blunders and collecting those extra points. Thank you so much, and I will catch you on the next mini lesson. Bye-bye.